be for us to engage with you. So, one second. So, um, so basically, we are going to, Helen and I will obviously be presenting and we'll be moderating. We have put you all on mute um, on purpose, not because we don't want to hear from you, but because um, if we hear from you all in one time, we may not hear anyone. So throughout the evening, we'll be asking questions and we want to engage with you, but through the chat box. And Helen and I will both be looking at the chat box and we will be monitoring the chat box and we will be... Um, commenting on all the things that you um, have said. And when it comes to question time, if at some point we don't manage to respond directly to your question, Helen and I promise you that we will email you um, either tonight, probably tomorrow, with a direct response if we don't feel that we have really responded to you either through our presentation or directly during our conversation. So please use the chat box as a way to communicate with us. When we share screens to make it easier for you just to see the presentation rather than seeing all your lovely faces, you can put it on speaker view. If you look at your Zoom screen, you should have speaker view. And if you click on speaker view, you'll be able to see um, the presentation, the shared screen and the person speaking rather than uh, being distracted by everyone else. So that's just a technical thing. Um, Helen, any other technical things I've forgotten? Um, no, I think we're good to go. I think we're okay. Good to go. Okay. So, um, welcome everyone to this evening's webinar, What to Expect from Your Menopause Journey. We are super, super excited that you're here and we're super excited to share um, insights into what menopause really is and very practical ways of dealing and navigating with specific menopause symptoms. Um, I'm going to present first um, and after I present, Helen is going to present and then we will have time for questions through the chat box um, and we will also want to engage with you in other ways to hear your thoughts um, about what you've heard tonight. So that's sort of how it's going to go. Um, we expect it to be less than an hour and a half, but it all depends on how many questions you have and how much information you uh, want from us and how much you know we can help you tonight and this evening. Um, but the plan is for it to be under an hour and a half. Um, okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to share my screen. If I can find now my yummy presentation it does not seem to be here one second let me get rid of this and then i can find it sorry one second everyone i'm just bringing up my screen share perfect here we go hold on one minute do you just love technology? Okay, here we go. Okay, I hope you can all see my screen now. Okay. So, um, one second, you know what? I'm also going to, fine, okay. So, busting the three menopause myths. This is what I'm going to be talking about this evening. Um, wait, you know what? I'm just going to hold on one second, people. Just one second. Okay. Okay. So, um, busting the three menopause myths. Welcome to this evening's webinar. I am Jacqueline Rose. Um, I am the menopause coach founder of The Yoga Room, yoga for women's health teacher and women's health advocate. And I am really passionate about changing the way that women understand and experience their health and well-being, about creating awareness of what is going on in their body, strengthening the body-mind connection and using yoga-based tools and techniques to do that. So um, that is me, but really this is me in images. I am a mum of five. Those five tushes that you can see bent over belong to me. Um, those men playing rugby do not belong to me. However, that is sometimes how I feel my life actually is. It's a bit of being in the mud, being in the thick of things and having a bit of a crazy time. 
Um, I am also, I do yoga. I am a yoga teacher and I practice yoga. And um, I am also a businesswoman and I run my business. I actually run two businesses and I am the person that um, does all the DIY at home. So I am actually quite busy and quite full on and do quite a lot. And I am one of those people who you would say juggles things, but um, I do it in a slightly different way than as you would imagine. Okay, I just actually want to turn off my WhatsApp because my WhatsApp is beeping and I don't want that to bother us. There we go, okay. So, this is your chance to engage with us in the chat box. When you hear the word menopause, what do you think or feel? What is the first initial gut reaction that you have when you hear the word menopause? And really the first thing that comes to your mind um, when you hear that, when you, you know, for some women, it may not trigger anything for them. For some women, it really may trigger um, a lot of emotions, positive, negative, whatever it is, put it in the chat box. Um, maybe Helen, you can read me some of the um, words that have been coming up. Yep. I can hit so, it. so people are saying shriveled and dry, old, oh, wonderful. hot flashes, stopping periods, hormones, beginning of the end, here we go again, over the hill, when Perfect. will it happen to me, wrinkly, Excellent. red, Optimistic. Excellent. Excellent. I love all those words because that is exactly why I am here today to rid your vocabulary, to rid your mind of all those words. That was perfect. Excellent. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay. So myth number one, menopause is only for women over 50. And that is exactly what some of you said before we started that the um, menopause, you know, you're sort of 46, 47, 48, and don't think you're yet in menopause. Because menopause is really for women, you know, over 50, it's not really relevant to you. And that is the first myth that we really have, that I, it, it doesn't really relate to me at the moment. So you may not even realize that all the random things you are going through and that you may be going to your doctor about, you know, there may be things that you're experiencing that you totally do not relate to menopause because you're 42, anywhere between, as you see, 42 to 45, even if you're 46 or 47, you just don't relate to what is going on in your body that changes as menopause, but you are in perimenopause. Perimenopause is that first stage of your menopause journey leading up to menopause which is a date in the calendar year as your hormones begin to change menopause is a hormonal trans transition and as your hormones change you are in perimenopause with all the different things that that entails um, menopause being a date in the calendar year it is the date of your last period and you need to you can only assess that 12 months after. So you have to have 12 period free months and then you can go back and say, right now, 12 months ago, I entered menopause and now I'm in menopause. All the time leading up to that date is perimenopause and that is when you can be experiencing all the different um, side effects. Myth number two, menopause means the beginning of the end. Exactly as um, some people said, shriveled up, dying, it's sort of like my life is, is over. So many women understand menopause is the beginning of the end because that is our cultural societal association with menopause. It has been um, bred into us and fed to us over the years um, that really menopause is the beginning of the end. And why is that? Well, firstly, let me counterbalance that by saying that menopause is not a disease. It is a natural stage in your life journey. And that's really, really important to remember. And so many women do not um, have that reference of menopause because menopause is very regularly seen as menopause, symptoms, you go to the doctor, there is a treatment, there is medication. And so it's treated within the medical profession as a disease as an illness as something that you need to remedy with medication. But menopause is a natural stage in your life's journey, just like puberty, 
just like your fertility years. It is the next stage, it is the bookend. There are two bookends in your life, and one is puberty and one is menopause. But women traditionally have not had the opportunities to live full, meaningful lives over the age of 60 because life expectancy was so much younger. Um, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, when we think about our grandmothers, when our, you know, when our grandmothers were born, or even our mothers, when they were born, how old were women when they died? Women were dying much, much younger. Today, women are living much, much longer lives. Life expectancy has increased. Health and wellness attitudes have changed. Improvements in socioeconomic status. The post-menopause life is totally, totally different. The expectations, the opportunities, the, the way that we perceive post-menopause life today is so, so different. The problem is, is that society or even our cultural language hasn't yet caught up in very many cases with what, with what is going on. I did um, a yoga course last year. I trained as a yoga therapist last year. One of the women in my course was 72 years old and she was just retraining as a yoga therapist. Age today means nothing. We can talk about the 50 year olds in popular culture today, like Jennifer Lopez and all these other women. Um, they may not represent us, but they are changing the way that age and aging is perceived. So I have a quote here from Dr. Christiane Northrup, who is one of the leaders in changing um, attitudes of women's health. If you don't know who she is, I advise you to look her up. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal woman who is really changing um, from the inside, from the medical profession, the way that women's health is approached, treated. Menopause is being recognized as the exciting next phase of a woman's life. It holds enormous promise for transforming and healing our bodies, minds, and spirits at the deepest level. Menopause is a transformative stage. It is a transformative journey. I don't call menopause menopause. I call it menopause journey. It is a journey. It is a period of life. It is a stage of life that you go through. It is a transition that is Pre, a pre-required transition to be able to enter the next phase of your amazing life. Okay. If number three, menopause means suffering. For all those women who wrote about all the different menopause symptoms, I have a nice long list here in bright red of a number of, of menopause symptoms. I don't like the word symptoms personally. I prefer the word side effects. Hot flushes, night sweats, insomnia, fuzzy brain, weight gain, dry skin, low libido, vaginal atrophy, stiff joints, declining bone density, osteoporosis, low energy, changes in period flow and frequency. Please know, women, your period will not just nicely, slowly dwindle and get less and um, get shorter until it stops. That's not what happens. It can go in all different ebbs and flows very heavy to very light to three months apart to then, you know, being every month for six months and then another four months. So real changes, which um, can be a lot of fun. Feeling low, depressed, anxiety, mood swings, forgetfulness, leaking, and the list goes on. And yes, this can be a very depressing list. Um, uh, there are about 75 diagnosed or 75 acknowledged menopause side effects, and you can experience them in all different ways. However, there are a multitude of potential side effects. I categorize them in three main categories of physical, emotional, mental, or cognitive. But if you understand what your body is going through and are prepared for this stage, stage of life and understand what this stage of life really is meant to be and why it happens, you can then find many, many ways to manage, treat, and even prevent menopausal side effects. Menopausal symptoms, menopausal side effects are real. In a certain number of women, they just sail through this stage of life and they really don't have very many um, changes or anything that really debilitates them or impacts them on a daily, you know, their daily function. For some women, uh, for the majority of women, they notice that things have changed. Really, any of these could be you know, things that you feel and a lot of other things. 
but nothing that is really debilitating, nothing that makes you feel that you can't function. And then for a percentage of women, these can show up in a super, super debilitating way. It can really affect function. It can affect how you show up at work. It can affect your relationships. There is a lot of things that can happen for the women who are really experiencing the physical, emotional, cognitive, mental health impacts in a very significant way. So reviewing our three myths on menopause. Menopause is only for women 50 plus. Now we know that is not true because there are the three stages of menopause, perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. Menopause means the beginning of the end. That is absolutely not true in today's day and age. And I will um, add to what I've said that I truly, truly believe, and I'm very passionate about changing the way women experience menopause by using this analogy. If you think of a young girl at the age of 10 and you think of her 20 years until the age of 30, she has become a totally different person. When she looks back at the age of 30 as to what happened over the last 20 years, there is no comparison to the woman she is at 30 versus the woman, the girl she was at 10. I believe that that should be the same for every woman when they look back at the age of 80 to when they were 60. Those 20 years, the same 20 year period between 60 and 80 can be as transformative, as empowering, as adventurous as the 20 years between 10 and 30. Now, obviously biologically different things are happening, but in terms of opportunities and in terms of the way that women see themselves, there is no reason why 20 years from 60 to 80 should be any different than 20 years from 10 to 30. And menopause means suffering. Yes, there are menopause side effects. Yes, women can experience quite um, significant changes, but there are ways to manage, treat, prevent those. And I'm gonna talk about those a little bit in a minute, touch on them a little bit in a minute. And also if we understand what menopause really, really is, that it is a hormonal, fluctuation it is hormonal imbalance that is trying for us to reach a new balanced state for our postmenopause life it changes the way that we understand it and the way that we interact and engage with that so what would happen if you change the way you understood and experienced your menopause journey and that really is how i work with women it really is um going through this education of understanding it, but then very practically, what would look different? How would menopause journey be different for you if you understood the way, if you changed the way you understood it and experienced it? So I'm just very, really in one minute, just gonna show one of the programs I do with women, which is the Menopause Starter Program. It's a six week program. It's a very holistic program because it in includes um, theory and practice. There is the theory of understanding and the awareness and sort of looking at the hormones that you're going through and, and there's sort of the theory side of it. There is also the very practical yoga practice. For me, I believe that yoga practice, the yoga that I teach, which is yoga for women's health, is the glue that binds everything, the holistic approach together. We assess seven areas of your menopausal health and well-being. Um, hormones, which is key to everything, menopause, side effects, stress, sleep, nutrition, um, movement, work-life balance. For follow-up accountability and implementation sessions, I have a dear, dear friend who went to a menopause specialist and came back with a very nice long list of about 25 to 30 different things she had to implement to make herself feel better. And she said to me, like, I mean, what does he think? Like, this doctor, you know, obviously doesn't realize that just to hand me a list of 25, 30 things that I can all of a sudden now implement is just not realistic. So I really understand what women are going through. I understand how busy your lives are. As you know, I also have a very busy life, but I know that accountability and implementation, that hand-holding, that support is really where um, you need the help to be able to make the changes that you need to make. And yoga nashit, yoga for women's health practice. So that is sort of one of the ways that I support women during this time. Um, I have a special offer. I'm coming to the end because we're going to be finishing up now. Um, I'm going to talk about this later on also, but just so that you know, I have a special offer, which is a 30 minute free mini assessment to start taking control of your menopause symptoms. And this mini assessment is for everyone that is here on the call and everyone that registered. Um, you, we can set up a time and it is a free, really the first step to figure out what is going on and the biggest challenge that you have and to, 
help you sort of um, figure out the best ways to to navigate and to minimize what you're going through. Because I really, really honestly believe, and I have seen this happen, and I'm not just talking about it in theory, because I have seen how women's experiences change and how it changes their lives. Your menopause journey is an exciting time, a time of rebirth, metamorphosis and discovery. It is the journey you have to take to step into the next exciting phase of your life. And when you can embrace menopause journey in that way and rid ourselves of the myths and the baggage that our culture and society have placed on us as to what menopause is, it changes the way you can show up experience and navigate your menopause journey. And my aim and my goal is to help every single woman navigate their menopause journey with ease and confidence. Um, yes. So that is the end of my short presentation. Um, Helen, if, I, if yes. you have any questions, if anyone has any questions for Jacqueline about what she's just talked about and um then please write it in the chat um as we said earlier um if we're not able to get to all the questions um during this time then we will e we have everybody's email so we will email you private answers tomorrow if we don't get to your question so if you have a question feel free to write it in the chat did you yeah. have anything else Jackie? Um, no, I know that the, the only thing I will say is that I know that a lot of women are thinking, um, yeah, what does she know? Because I know that when you are in a state of uh, pain, suffering, struggle, um, you just don't think there is any way out. When you are experiencing debilitating menopause side effects, and when you've gone to the doctor, and when the doctor, and you haven't really got very much joy from your doctor, um, when you feel like you have totally lost who you are, you don't know, um, you know, you, you sort of want to get back to being the person that you remember being, and you just don't feel like yourself anymore. That is what menopause journey does to so many women. You just don't feel like yourself anymore. You think you're going crazy. You're experiencing all these different things. You're not getting any clear answers. Your doctor really isn't helping you. And you just think that you are, um, there's so much stress, anxiety, confusion, added to all the things you're going through. Let me tell you, you are not alone. You are totally normal. And there are ways to navigate this time. Thank you. Take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. Yes, everyone should just take a breath. <sighs> um, thank you, Jacqueline. It's, yeah, thank you. I, I need to hear all these things too. Um, so I'm gonna now begin. So if you have any questions, just put them. Yeah. Well, I, Helen, Helen's now going to present. I'm going to be looking at the chat box. So anyone um, who wants to comment or chat, um, we will refer to the questions after Helen. Or I, if I have a chance, I will mess with you privately. Yes. Um, I can see already we have the questions. Okay, great. So I'm going to. Um, you can share your screen. Yes, I'm going to share my screen now. And um, oops, um, I can see that someone's raised their hand. Um, if you're raising your hand because you want us to call on you, just please comment in the chat box. We will respond to you um, either during our question time uh, later on, or we will respond to you privately. So please, please use the chat box as the way to communicate with us at the moment. We are reading it, we are watching it, and we will respond to you. Right. Okay. Um, so thank you, Jacqueline. I think it's so helpful just to even have an idea of what to expect and to try and bust some of those myths around the menopause that we all have from society. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the emotional side of the menopause because that's more my remit. And um, 
I think it's a very interesting time in our lives and there are a lot of emotional changes. So on top of all the physical changes and hormonal changes we're having, there are also just changes in our lives. Um, and some of them we know what to expect and some of them we don't and that can be a bit anxiety provoking. Um, but it is a period of change. I think those of us who have children, um, our kids are getting older and leaving home and getting married and um, are at a different stage and need us in a different way. And so there are automatic natural changes in this stage of our lives whereby our kids need us less and what that does to us. So some of us love this because we have more freedom and some of us find it really challenging. There's, a, there's the whole empty nest syndrome. How do you feel about yourself when your kids are no longer at home with you, needing you? And so that can be challenging for some of us. And it's also, um, there are, um, there's also somewhat, there are feelings of loss, loss of what we used to be and changes in our identity. Um, who am I if I'm not that busy mum with um, running around after my kids? Who, who am I now? And um, it's, I, do, I find it really fascinating to examine all these things. Um, but for some of us, it can be really challenging. Um, one of the positive things about these times is we have more time to ourselves, which um, means that we have more time to think about ourselves. And uh, one of the things that happens when we start thinking about ourselves is we think about, is this it? Is this the life I hope to have? It actually is a time where we often, because we have more time to ourselves, we examine our lives. Is this the career we wanted? Is this the relationship we wanted with our husband, the ones of us who are married? Is this the relationship we want to have with our kids, Is if we have kids? There's a lot of things to examine. Is this, am I being the best person I want to be? So there's a lot of things going on um, in ourselves. And um, so, just something to think about. And it's interesting how many women nowadays in their 40s and 50s actually change careers. I find it amazing and, and brilliant in a positive way. Like I love it that people are examining what's going on in their life and actually choosing new challenges. Um, and so a lot of people choose new jobs and, um, and that's great. But on top with all of this, all these changes and all these things going on, there's a lot of worry and anxiety. I think I hear from a lot of my clients um, in their 40s and 50s, they're worrying about their children. When are they gonna get married? Or uh, are they going to get married? Are they going to leave home? Are they going to find a career? They're in the army, worried about them in the army. There's a lot of worry about older children. Then there's worries about our relationship with our husbands sometimes. There's worries about ourselves, worries about the future. What does the future hold? And then on top of that, there is the worries about our parents um, because we're also in that sandwich generation whereby we're having, if we're lucky enough to have parents still alive, our parents are getting older. And um, for some of us whose parents have lost some of their independence or who are suffering with illnesses or possibly with dementia, dementia there it's quite terrifying because when we look at them that we think that's our future so there's a lot of worry and anxiety at this time and i think change for some people is a time of anxiety so if you're feeling like this it's okay <laughs> um, 
you're not alone. The fact that over 60 women signed up for this um, webinar tonight shows you how not alone you are in having feelings of uncertainty about what to expect in this time of life. And the fact that there are people out there like Jacqueline to help you, and I'm here to help you, means that you're not alone and you don't need to suffer alone. I think it's a great idea to share what you're feeling and what, um, what's going on for you with your friends, with your support system, um, so that you, you know, you really aren't alone. And the more you share it, the more we can make it normal in society to talk about the menopause and what people go through, then the easier it is um, because um, sharing a problem, it just helps you, it just takes that burden off you. Um, so who am I? I just thought maybe it might be helpful to introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. I'm Helen Atlas and I'm a life coach for women. And uh, my passion is just to help women feel good about themselves, to let go of stress. I feel like today everybody tells me they're stressed. So I help women to feel calmer to use their time well, to um, have better relationships with those that they love around them, and to deal with whatever is they're dealing with. And so with my clients who are in their 40s and 50s, these are some of the things that I'm helping them with. And um, so just so that you know, this is what I do. And, um, there are so many things I could have talked about tonight because there are a lot of emotions going on at the time of your 40s and your 50s. But I decided tonight that I was going to just focus on um, building a positive menopause mindset. And what does that mean, this word mindset? It just means how we think about uh, the menopause and how we think about aging in general. Um, I think it's really fascinating and a very important exercise to actually examine our beliefs about aging. I think most of the time we don't think about it, we just have these beliefs and we don't examine them. So that's my first question to you to write in the chat. What, when, when I say to you, you know, you're getting older, what do you think? What are your beliefs around aging? Um, is it really aging means, you know, getting sick and dying? Is that what it means to you? Is it something um, very, it's, I think most of the time, unfortunately, people talk about aging in a very negative way. And um, I think if we can examine our beliefs and what we think about them, about aging, then we can see if those beliefs that we have are actually serving us. Are they helping us to go into the future in a positive way? Or maybe if we know what our beliefs are, then we can let them go and choose a more positive belief. So where do our beliefs come from? Our beliefs come from our childhood. How did your parents talk about getting old in your home? What were the things that they saying like, oh no, I'm too old to do that, about everything from the age of 40 onwards? Or, or were they very positive about getting old? Um, you know, and it's, it's, but it's also from our childhood, it's also from society and our communities. And what's interesting about our beliefs is that we use certain words, um, like I am too old to do that, for instance. And um, our words that we use around aging are so powerful. Um, I just like you to think about for a moment, what words do you use? Because words create our reality. I'll give you an example. 
if you had a boss who every day at the end of your work day would say to you, um, oh, you did an amazing job. I really like that email you sent to so-and-so and or that project you did really well. Then um, even if you felt you'd actually not had such a good day at work that day, if, they, if you had a boss who every day said you were amazing, you would start to believe it because you would hear those words. And if someone would ask you, how's your job going? You'd go, actually, it's going really well. My boss is really happy with me. They keep telling me these things. Well, if you had a boss who was really negative and at the end of your day would say, I'm really not happy with what you did today, that you're going to have to redo, redo that whole project. It's not up to standard. I don't like what you've done and criticized you every single day. Even if you thought you'd done actually quite a good job, their words would start to become your truth. You'd say, oh, actually, I don't think I'm doing such a great job. And so the words we use about aging, what, you know, what actual words we use for, to ourselves and to everyone around us actually creates the reality of how we experience aging. Um, and so because it's so uh, common that everyone thinks so negatively about aging, I would love you to think about a positive way of talking about aging. If we could perhaps change the words that we use and have a positive phrase like uh, I'm embracing this uh, new stage in my life I'm excited to see what this new stage in my life is gonna be um, I'm looking forward to growing older there's kind of more positive things um, and it has to be something that rings true to you, but there's a real power in saying positive things. Um, another great exercise to do is to actually write a list of what you love about getting older. And I, um, I've, I've written up a, uh, a Word document with it with a place where you can write down your list of what you love about getting older and where you can write some positive phrases. I call them positive affirmations about aging. So um, I'm, I'm gonna send that to you all in an email tomorrow. Um, so I'd love you to think about what you love about getting older. Please write in the chat if you can think of anything offhand, because I don't think any, any of us ever do this. We only think about the negative things about getting older. So I did this exercise in preparation for this uh, webinar, and I actually came up with loads of great things. For instance, well, I, I will just butt in yeah. Helen and tell you that yes. we've got some very nice comments in the chat. Oh yes, go on, tell me. More self-compassion, aging means serenity, balance, better awareness of my real needs, grateful to be my age, more leisure time, to being a grandma. I need to, uh, uh, feeling less like I need to prove myself. That's an excellent one. I love that one because that's really uh, related to that wisdom that you have with menopause. Perspective, wiser. Um, some great, great comments here. Really empowering, positive comments here. Yeah, I love that. Love it, love it. But most of the time we don't think about these things. So some of the ones that I thought of were, um, I, I um, care less what other people think of me. And I think that's so huge. I think when we're younger, we tend to always worry what other people are thinking of me. And we people please, we do things just because we feel we have to please people. And when we get older, we do a lot less of that. So we can actually do things that we want to do. And, and that idea of the priorities, somebody said, that I love. I, I feel that I'm less, I get less stressed about the little things because I have my priorities. It, things are much clearer to me what my priorities are. So then the little things I worry less about because I know they're not so important. But when I was younger, those were the things that stressed me out, those little things. So I level that. I feel I understand myself so much better. I, um, 
I am so much better at taking care of myself. I, I think I did not do that so well when I was younger. And now I really do. I think about my health. I didn't think about it before because now I have more time to think about myself. I'm also more willing to spend money on myself and ask for help. Well, in the past, I wouldn't have done that. I like, there's so many things. I'm less critical of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I was just writing this list. I was like, wow, isn't it cool getting older? So I would just love you to do this exercise just because for, for those of you who are dreading getting older, this is just to try and push back the balance a bit to being slightly more positive about getting older. Um, and um, what I'd like to do as well as a final exercise is to start to think about the future, what you want your future to be and in a positive way. I think that when we're younger in our 20s and our 30s, we make so many plans and have so many goals for our future. And for some reason at 50 or at 40, we don't. I think we should still be have, making those goals. And as Jacqueline said, we've got decades left to live. Why are we not making new goals at the age of 40, at the age of 50, at the age of 60 for the, for the next period of time? So the next exercise I'd love for you is to think about what is your vision for your next 10 years? How do you want your life to look in 10 years time? And um, I've written also a sheet for this that you can fill in, which just makes it a bit easier as an exercise, which I will send you also tomorrow, which is what are your goals for your health? What are your goals for your career? What are your goals for your relationships? What are your goals for self-development in the next 10 years? And the more specific you are and how you're gonna get there, the more real it will be. And then I think if we have very specific goals, then we're more positive about the future. And we can feel like instead of this, these menopause things happening to us, we're feeling we're taking control, we're active players in this future in this journey going forward instead of just things happening to us we're choosing the path that we're taking and that's very exciting and um that's what i want for all of you lovely ladies here tonight um so in summary this is a period of time where there's a lot of emotions there's feelings of change there's feelings of loss change of identity changing in relationships with our children with our husbands uh, with our parents um, we have more time to ourselves there's a lot of worry and anxiety around people around us um, but you're not alone you're not the only one feeling like this and you're not alone if you need the help there's help out there to make you feel better um, talks about the power of your beliefs. What are your beliefs around aging? What words do you use around aging? And then writing that list of the positive things about aging and then thinking about the future. So um, I would like to offer all of you, because obviously we couldn't cover most of the things that happened to you during this period of time, just to... I'd like to offer all of you ladies out there a 40 minute coaching call. I do it on um, Skype or Zoom um, to discuss if you're having any of these feelings of loss, of change, of anxiety about the future or how to deal with anxiety and stress in general and, or how you want to plan your future and you'd like to talk it through with me, I'm here for you just, um, and I'll send you tomorrow in the email um, how to make an appointment with me. Uh, uh, I'll send you how to set up the time and I'll also send you how to set up a time with Jacqueline as well in an email tomorrow. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now.
So um, that is it. If you have any yeah, questions. So we're going to, yeah, so anyone who has questions, um, feel free to write them in the chat now. There are a couple of questions that while people are thinking, there are a couple of questions above that I'm going to relate to. But if you have questions, Write them in now and Helen and I will both have a look and, and look at them. Uh, there were two specific questions that someone had written about um, weight loss, about sleep problems, about diabetes, how it affects menopause. Those were specific things that were coming up, but anyone else that wants questions, we have some time now, so feel free to write it in the chat, any questions you have. Um, what I wanna say um, with relation to um, menopause side effects, menopause changes, the physical, the emotional, the cognitive. Physical can be any changes like weight gain, insomnia, changes in sleep patterns, fluctuating um, periods, hot flushes, um, anything real physical, uh, vaginal dryness, all those types of things. Emotional is stuff that Helen was talking about, um, you know, loss of identity, anxiety, mood swings, feeling more stressed. Um, and the cognitive is the, you know, short-term memory loss, the foggy brain, thinking you've got early onset dementia, which I hear from so many women. Um, all those things, it basically boils down to what is going on with your hormones. That is the starting point. And I mentioned that um, when I work with women, we do a deep dive health and wellness assessment where we look at seven areas of your health and wellness. And everything starts off with your hormones. Um, most of the things that you are going through begin with the hormones and then how your hormones interact with those other areas of health and wellness. As I said, um, menopause symptoms and the hormones, the sleep, stress, nutrition, movement, work-life balance. And um, when I work with women, you know, everyone sort of wants to know, you know, well, how do I cure this or how do I cure that? And for me, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, it really is the holistic approach. There are some amazing, amazing women, uh, coaches, therapists, um, health coaches, who work in each of those fields, um, nutritionists for women in midlife, or, um, you know, all different women um, who, uh, who or, you know, people who work with women in each of the different areas. I really feel from my experience, from my training and from working with women that unless you look at your role or the role that each of those seven areas play in your life, and it could be just to say, you know, tick that area's fine. Or it could be that there's a slight, slight tweak that you need to do to make, um, that would make such an enormous difference. I'm very, very much about small changes, small, realistic, practical changes that you can make in your daily life that can have a big, profound impact in the way that you feel. Um, so yes, diabetes is definitely an issue because of the way that the hormones, the insulin, the cortisol all interact. Um, losing weight, putting on weight is all about the sort of your hormones. And again, it's dependent on if the things you are experiencing are debilitating enough that you want to change it. You know, some women are unable to focus, have foggy brain and are unable to concentrate or can't even remember what they've been talking about. And then you're in meetings at work and you come out and you're like, I like, I, I just have no idea what just happened there. So, it, or, you know, or you could just, you know, have a bit of, um, you know, fluctuating periods and it's like you can manage and, and deal with. So it really is about what your personal experience is and what areas in your life need to be addressed to make the changes that you specifically need. So I'm very, very much about every woman has her menopause journey. I think the seven areas of your health and well-being that I work with women with have to be assessed. And then we can start looking at what do you need? So, um, yeah, sleep problems also, and hot flushes. It's, it's all, it all starts with the hormones. Um, yeah, we've got so, lots and lots of messages here, so lots and lots of comments. Shall I just, um, from my yes. perspective. Yes, um, go, go to the questions that are raised to your, yes. to your, I can see so many questions here. Yes, um, 
I can see a lot of people are bringing up the sleep issues. And it is super common. Um, I hear this all the time from my clients um, having sleep issues. And um, so some of the reasons why we're having sleep issues is because of stress and worries those worries that keep us up at night or suddenly wake us up in the middle of the night like oh my gosh um and it's very common i hear this all the time and some of the things so i have quite a lot of tips i can say about how i help my clients with sleep issues um some people it's about the going to bed early issue <laughs> Some of us just find it really, really hard. And it's interesting how um, it's just the same as when we have kids with sleep issues and bedtime routines, that we actually need a bedtime routine so that our body knows that we're winding down and going to bed. And so um, there's really great ways of start helping yourself to have a really great bedtime routine and you can't if you always go to bed at 1 a.m you can't suddenly say okay i'm going to start going to bed now at 10 o'clock because your body is not used to that you have to do it gradually so i've done that a lot with um, clients whereby we brought down the bedtime from one in the morning to nearer to sort of 11 10 30 11 which is huge difference when they have to get up early in the morning um so that's one thing is to actually think about your bedtime routine and and the um the winding down process um the other thing that i find works for me this is the key to this is my any sleep issues that i have the key for me is meditation um, and what for me that means is I have an app on my phone. I like the one called Headspace. There's hundreds of different apps. They're all great. It does, you don't have to, it doesn't matter which app. But the way I use it for sleep is um, if I find my mind is racing with everything that is going on in my life or everything I need to do tomorrow or worries about a family member or myself, um, sometimes I just can't switch off those feelings and that anxiety. So for me, what I do is I put in earphones and um, on Headspace, they have sleep meditations. They have a 10 minute like you can do it five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I do 10 minutes. And there's this man who tells you what to do. Deep, to take a few deep breaths, turn off different parts of your body, takes you on a journey. And for me, it just helps me to switch off from those worrying thoughts. And it's like magic. I fall asleep. If I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't fall back to sleep, I listen again to... A, to one of these things and for me it was a life changer listening to these uh, meditations you can listen to soft music um, I find it works amazingly so that's just a little tip um, that helps me with my sleep issues and help I teach my clients about if that's helpful for any of you to try out Amazing, Helen. Thank you. Um, I want to respond. I saw there are a lot of comments here about HRT um, and other alternatives. So let me firstly talk about this. Let me say I am not a medically trained doctor. I don't have a medical background. I have a women's health background and a yoga for women's health background. And I have a lot of experience and training in the world of holistic health. Um, so from what I understand and from what I've heard there, um, HRT is a very, very emotional, emotive subject because of the, um, report that came out a number of years ago based on research that was done that said that HRT is cancer causing in women. Um, the report was later totally, to oh, and that stopped HRT and doctors carry with them that um, 
philosophy, many doctors carry them, that philosophy that HRT and cancer have a very, very close relationship. The research was debunked. It was looking at very long-term use of women over the age of 60. Um, and a lot of doctors that I follow, um, specifically a doctor called Dr. Louise Newson, who is in England, very, very much um, promotes the use of HRT. Menopause is a hormonal fluctuation and to relieve many of the symptoms, you need to support your body hormonally. What I will, so there are people um, menopause specialists who absolutely say HRT is a very good way to navigate this time. What I will say is that if you choose to do HRT, and I'm not a proponent, propon like I'm not anti or pro, what I do feel is that you need to know what to ask your doctor for and what to expect if you want to have an HRT conversation. You need to know if there is, if you specifically have high risk indicators, you specifically need to be monitored. You should not be given HRT and said, I'll see you in five years. You should be monitored. There are different levels, different dosages of HRT, different combinations of the different drugs, of the different hormones. You may find you don't need all the hormones. Surprisingly, women, at this stage may need testosterone more than they need anything else. And I know we always think testosterone is the male hormone and women don't have testosterone. Testosterone is a really super important hormone. And the important thing during menopause is the interrelationship between the hormones. It's not only the objective level of where your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and all the other hormones are. It's also the interplay between them. So you need, so I do not think that HRT is um, forbidden. I do not think it is the devil. I think that there is a place for it if it is appropriate for you. If it's not appropriate for you or you choose not to go down the HRT route, there are lots and lots of other natural ways, supplements and other things and other natural things and topical hormonal treatments you can do. Like for example, for vaginal dryness, you can have an estrogen cream, um, which can help. But because I come from the world of yoga for women's health and because I, a yoga for women's health is a very specific approach to yoga, um, for me, it is the glue, the foundation that holds everything that I do together. And it's why when I work with women, we do all the other things of, looking at different ways in these seven areas of health and wellness that we can change and tweak and that we can make improvements to help you specifically. But also there is the need for something that touches body, mind and spirit all together. And for me personally, that is yoga nashi, yoga for women's health. So I hope I've answered the question, um, the questions that were asked. Um, yeah. That's what, um, what I have to say specifically about the questions that were asked in the chat. Um, yes, Deborah's talking about if sleep isn't proper, the exhaustion is. Yeah, there's so there's so much going on. What, the only thing I really want to answer you without going too deep into every person's specific issue, and as, as Helen and I said, we will email each of you specifically if you ask us a specific question. Um, the big thing here is that, as I said during my presentation, there are 75 different ways menopause can show up. And you can think that you have this issue that is totally unrelated to menopause and therefore you go to the doctor and you need to have a treatment and you need to have a medication to cure or to fix whatever it is that you're going through. Um, most of the things for all the women that are here um, together with us this evening, at the beginning you all mentioned your ages and for me personally, I recommend every single woman to go to the doctor before I work with her to make sure that she really is not in that tiny 1% of women who may be suffering from something medical. But more often than not, all the things that you're talking about here are menopause related and therefore can have an alternative approach to managing, treating and preventing. 
Helen, is there anything that you would like to add from the comments you've seen? Um, no, I think, um, you know, it's, it's obviously a hard time and there's a lot of worry and um, there's a lot of not knowing what to do. And, you know, some people say, I can't think of anything positive to say about aging. And that's why I said, do this exercise. It's really hard. I think there is so much negativity that we've grown up with, with just that's how we think about it. Um, so you're not alone. I, you know, I'm with you there. I hear that. I hear that. And um, um, the waking up with problems when you, <laughs> with the racing uh, thoughts, um, morning anxiety I think people talked about I think the same way as if we have a bedtime routine I think it's good to have a morning routine to start your day off in a positive way just the way that uh, a lot of us say thank you to God first thing in the morning um, there are things you can do first thing in the morning that can help you with that a few minutes of meditation a few minutes of just thinking how you want your morning to be and then doing if you've got all those racing thoughts maybe doing a brain dump like writing it all out and just like letting it out of your head getting it out of your head there's lots of things you could do I mean I'm happy to talk individually with anyone who wants to about yeah I, I i i do that as helen suggested and i've heard helen say it before i have a pen and paper next to my bed that's it doesn't matter whenever the thought pops in it then gets written down and then yeah. it's in a safe space absolutely absolutely um so what we thought would might be nice to do at, um to sort of unless anyone has any other questions is to for people to write in the chat what they're taking away what's one thing because i just would love it for you we would just love it for you that your one thing that you've learned today or one thing that you're taking away because i want the fact that you have to do that exercise it's not really for us it's for you so that you, the fact that you've written down one thing that you're taking away um from this uh short webinar um something you've learned something you've thought about some new way of looking at something um so yes i'll just we'll give you a minute or two just to yeah so the I, one the one practical thing that you've learned from today that you can take with you We're going to give you a minute to write it down. Um, I'm going to start reading through Helen because they're coming thick and fast. Oh, great. Yes. Positive attitude, positivity and hope. We're not alone. Totally, totally not alone. I know so many women feel that they're alone, but they're ne you're never alone with this. Uh, resources for meditation and menopause, amazing. And I'm happy to give more uh, resources with pleasure. I've got a whole list. I, I just didn't, I just talked about the one app. Yeah. I can Someone see wants Lisa's already downloaded the Headspace app. Yay, yeah. I love Headspace. <laughs> Oh, I love what this lady says, can take control over the changes. That's exactly, exactly right. And um, time to write your bucket list, Elisa, absolutely. What, yes. is that, that's your vision for the next ten, you know, 10 years. Yes. What are you gonna do? Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't have new goals and new things to look forward to. Absolutely, yes. I know you're the one who jumps out of the plane and just things like that. <laughs> Change can be a good thing. Yes, change menopause doesn't always need to be negative. The beginning, yeah, beginning of a new exciting life. Totally. Embracing the changes. I love that. I love that. Not to feel yeah. overwhelmed, but find ways to take it on practically. That's, that's what we want for you. 
he liked the idea of setting goals and thinking about positive aspects of aging. Yes, I think nobody talked about the positive aspects of aging. So this is, yeah, yeah, that's what I love. I love that. Yeah, part. I'm going to um, send you all to go look at something. Um, following on from Helen's changing the way you think about aging, I was very, very impacted by um, the actress Jane Fonda. If you go to YouTube and you look at Jane Fonda Third Act or Jane Fonda Aging, she has a phenomenal, phenomenal approach to aging. Um, so I definitely recommend anyone and everyone to look up Jane Fonda on YouTube, her, her, her presentations about aging. Yes, so yay Julie for the downloading the Headspace app and thinking positivity, positively about aging. And Ooh. it's never too late to change careers. Yes. Absolutely. I think I think as women in our forties and fifties are absolutely the age to to be doing the career that you want to be doing. Don't well, I, I, I will tell you that I am one of those women who changed my career. I spent the first twenty years of my professional life in a totally, totally different career. And I um I've totally switched. So it's it's yes. absolutely possible. And any time, any time is is the time to do it. Right. Um, okay. Amazing answers, ladies. Wow. Yeah. Really, really fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Okay. Helen and I are definitely available if you want to reach out to us separately. Um, and we're going to email you also with sort of extra information and also a recording of today's um, session. Um, so you'll... Keep an eye out in your inbox for um, emails from us. And if you want to get hold of us, Helen, maybe tell everyone where they can reach you. Well, I'm on Facebook. I think a lot of people found me on Facebook. So you can look for me there. In Helen Abelis, Life Coaching for Women, or Helen Turnberg Abelis, my profile. Um, and... Um, Oh, thank you, ladies, for writing nice comments. And um, yes, and I'm going just, I'm sending you all an email tomorrow and just check your spam folders that it doesn't go there. Uh, I'm going to put in the recording, I'm going to put in uh, how to contact uh, Jacqueline and I for these free sessions. And also, I'm going to put in uh, the word documents that I've made for you working out your vision for the next 10 years and your list of things, positive things about aging and positive affirmations about aging. So I'm going to send that all to you tomorrow. So just look out for that email. And if, if anyone wants to reach out to me uh, before, before then, I am at the yoga room 120 that's one word the yoga room 120 everywhere so <laughs> facebook is the yoga room 120 my website is the yoga room 120.com you can email me at the yoga room 120 at gmail i've made it very very simple you just need to remember one word the yoga room 120 and you can find me anywhere you need to get hold of me if you want to get hold of me before tomorrow evening before tomorrow uh, tomorrow before you get my email right um okay so thank you ladies and thank you for all your lovely comments and thank you for joining in i'm sorry we weren't able to have more of a discussion it was just uh because so many women were no it was so before. so blown away by how many women wanted to attend and as helen said it attests to the fact this is something that affects every single woman and each of us in our own ways are here to support you during this time. Right. So thank you so much, ladies, for joining us and um, have, a you know, great have, a, have a great evening. Take care. <laughs> See you soon, everyone. Um, Such lovely yeah. comments we're getting here. I know. I was just saving the chat. Yes, yes. Let's just wait for everyone to remove themselves and then we can stay on for one minute afterwards. 
Yes. yes. Hoping that everyone will. Okay. One second. I just want to save the chat. <laughs> You see someone wrote, I love that it was called What to Expect, similar to What to Expect When You're Expecting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a good title. Okay, yeah. it is saved, but I'm a bit nervous. I just want to... I also um, saved it. And I also it. recorded it. Did you record it? I saw that it was recording, so I, I didn't record it. it. I yeah. did. Okay, fine. So it'll come to me. I recorded it. Um... I'm hoping that everyone is going to remove themselves. <laughs> there are some very interesting comments. You know what, Helen, if you want, oh, Daniela's still on. Daniela's probably not even on, she's probably disappeared. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I can you can we remove them? One second, I just want to put it as a thing. I'm going to stop recording now. Yes, 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 stop recording. <laughs> 